how do I show my dog that I'm the alpha? Um, well, firstly, I, I, I probably wouldn't use terms like alpha or dominance because what, what they bring is a side to the relationship that I don't like. Mm -hmm. That I'm human, I'm the boss, and everything I say you will do. You will mm -hmm. show respect. Because I think that takes a lot of joy out of the relationship. Yeah. Um, when I interact with dogs, um, I acknowledge their dogs. I acknowledge they have a point of view very different from ours. I acknowledge they learn very differently from ours. And so a dog is a dog and a dog is an individual dog. I acknowledge every single dog is unique. And if it's living with me, it, my, my buddy, if you like. We lost right. your audio there for a second. Oh dear. Am you I said the, the dog is living with me and then it dropped out. Yes. Um, so if the dog is living with me um, as my companion, I want to teach it look, um, I'm human, you're a dog. I'm gonna respect you as such, but being human and the fact you're living in my house and I'm not living in your cave, <laughs> um, I have certain house rules, not just for dogs, but for other people, no smoking in the house, uh, especially children, no noise at certain times. You know, we have rules mm -hmm. and I will just teach the dog the rules and by and large, so I think my rules are pretty cool that um, I don't require much um, obedience, if you like. What I ask for is on demand, absolute reliability, very, very occasionally. So I will signal to the dog, this is no longer a suggestion. It's an absolute instruction that I need followed quickly, promptly, happily. We're not going to argue over this. If I say, Hugo Louis, sit, you must sit instantly. And it's not debatable. And the way I enforce that is by calmly, but persistently being insistent. If I call you Hugo Louis instead of Hugie Baby or Hugo Bitch, my many pet names, um, this is a command where I will follow up. So, you know, what I found is quite recently, you can teach a dog to give you on demand absolute compliance by signaling when you want that and by following up um, as some families interact with their kids you know it's it's like oh johnny do this johnny do that johnny and then they suddenly change his name juan carlos hernandez siéntate so not only do they change his name from johnny to juan carlos hernandez but they speak in a different language sometimes yeah. they have a different expression and little Johnny does it immediately. Mm -hmm. Sadly, I think with humans, a lot of this has been punishment based. Uh, little Johnny got a slap on the back of his head or yeah. got shouted at. And what I found with dogs is you don't even have to raise your voice. All you need to teach the dog, if I say Hugo Louise, sit, you must sit. If you don't, if you make me repeat the verbal cue or command, if you like, then you have to repeat the whole exercise until you sit after single command. So if you do it, we're back to normal immediately. If you don't, then you have to do it at least twice, maybe three or four times until you do it following a single command. Um, and so, yes, I think humans have to be in control some of the time, very little of the time, like when out in public, if you say sit, you want your dog to sit, simple as that. And if he does, You've got a really good dog in public. And for the rest of the time, you can let the dog be on doggy automatic, doing what he wants, given you know, the provisions of some rules and regulations, of course, like in dog parks, you shouldn't chase and retrieve another dog's ball. That's not locked on as a good thing. So he must not rub it off yeah. your ball. He's got to understand that. Um, and I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, I live with dogs on automatic. And when I speak to them, it's not a command, it's a suggestion. Now, because when I give a command, and I, I've signaled this with its formal name, I don't need to squish the dog. I can let the dog be a dog. 
Um, because when I give requests, I let the dog ignore me. If I say, Hughie, move over, or Hughie, off the couch, and he doesn't, I say, oh, all right, stay on the couch. That will not uh, alter, interfere with, or ruin my control over the dog when I want it. So, you know, to me, the dog, it, it really is. He's, he's a companion and a good companion um, that I share life with. And I don't want to destroy his dogginess. I don't want to inhibit his behavior. I don't want him to be scared of me. And of course, this sadly is the fallout when you raise your voice or you're like, Rover, you sit down. That ain't good for a relationship. And I don't want the dog to be minding me because he's living in fear. So it's just a different way of looking at dogs. And I think it's exactly what I was just writing right now. And in, in, I'm writing a book. And it was about how, <coughs> when I came onto the doggy scene, the general way of training dogs, number one, we didn't do much with behavior problems or temperament. We didn't do much to change them. We just punished them for misbehaving. Yeah. So we didn't explain the rules. There was no instruction beforehand, even when teaching obedience, which was your dog's doing nothing wrong. You're just trying to teach him to listen to you. you, you there was no training until they were a year old. Then there were no instructions. And all you did was wait for the dog to screw up and break rules didn't know existed and you jerked his collar because all the training was on leash. Well, this wasn't what owners wanted. And when uh, serious puppy training came around, it was, it was revolutionary because my approach to behavior problems was one, why don't you teach the dog what you want him to do? Like just teach him to sit on cue you have got rid of 90% of annoying behavior problems right there. Jumping up, running out the front door, humping other out, you know, yeah. and, sit. and not only does it prevent behavior problems, it allows you to deal with them. This is the second thing using your voice, but not just screaming, no bad dog, which just lets the dog know you're getting it wrong. My voice uses instructive reprimands that let the dog know two pieces of information. Stop what you're doing, do this instead. And, and so it's just a different way of, of looking at dogs and it takes a lot of the unpleasantness out of it. Because if we're honest, owners don't want to do this. They know it's wrong. Um, and when trainers find different ways, they don't want to do it either. They want a, you see, I've always, I always looked on puppy class as building a village. And when an, a family and a puppy is in my class, they now become the equivalent, you know, of my dog training village. And not only do I enjoy the puppy's progress through his education and development and their second puppy and their third, and then 40 years later, their fifth puppy, that now belongs to their children that were two, four and eight when they were in class. Now they're all at university and some are even, you know, working. Mm -hmm. And, and it was just, and to me, that's what life's about. And it's actually something I dearly miss when I moved to the States compared with Europe. I, I find the States very insular, especially in cities, yeah. you know, people don't say hello to each other, but in, any European country, everybody says hello to everybody. And, and the one thing that we had uh, in, in Britain, which I thought was brilliant, because Britain are, of course, a little, you know, up a stiff upper lip, was the pub. It's a place you could go and to meet any type of person and you would chat to them. Because we drink standing up and I'm chatting to this person, I turn around and I talk to this person. And the first person could have been a secretary and the next person could be a lord of the manor. <laughs> and I miss that. And that's what puppy classes gave me. They gave me a village back again, not of dogs that I know, but of people that I know. And, I'm, I'm, and I still hear from them. Yeah. You know, it was a sad thing the other day. I used to get a Christmas card from the owner of an Irish terrier in class with me in 1983. And I would occasionally write back and then 
all of a sudden I stopped getting the cards and I, I've written and called, but mm -hmm. I presume this lady is, is now no longer with us. Yeah. But, you know, it was sad because I, I don't know. And no one knew, I guess, to look for her Christmas card list and inform everybody, you know. Yeah. But it's, um, no, it's about living with animals, not trying to, like, dominate them.